My name's John and I'm a collector of classic and vintage motorcycles and today I'd like to show you my 1975 Moto Marini 3.5 Sport. Now Moto Marini is a brand that isn't that familiar when compared to Ducati, MV Augusta or Moto Guzzi but they were an Italian company that were founded in the 1920s by Alfonso Marini and uh, right and through until the sort of late 1960s were manufacturers of quite small capacity bikes um, such as this Corsaro here behind me, this is a 1963 model 125cc but they made well built, well engineered, teenager proof if you like small capacity bikes. During this period as well they were very successful at the racing market in terms of their national series which was up to 175cc and they were also pretty successful in the international racing scene as well. In 1963 in fact they finished second in the 250cc world championships. Um, Tarquinio Provini was their main rider back then who was very well known and even the legend that is Giacomo Agostini cut his teeth riding these in the national series in Italy before he went on to bigger better things. In 1969, Gabriella Marini took over the business from her father and one of the first things she did was to bring across head Italian engineer from Ferrari, a guy called Franco Lambertini and he set about designing a 350cc V-twin engine and in 1973 Marini launched this, the 3.5 Strada, touring model if you like, with this beautifully new design, all alloy engine, 350cc V-twin engine. A year later, that evolved into, or to be joined by, the 3.5 Sport, which I suppose, if you like, is the cafe racer version of the Strada shown there. So some interesting features about this engine are, first of all, cylinder heads. So this was one of the first production motorcycles to have what's called a heron head. So the cylinder head is flat and the combustion chamber is actually within the top of the piston. That gives some advantages on performance, uh, fuel efficiency, but also keeps the cylinder heads quite small and compact, helps keep it lighter weight. That was a technology that was brought across by Lambertini from Ferrari and was used in Formula One at the time, but wasn't really common in the motorcycle world until much later. This engine also has full electronic self-generating ignition and this twin carburetor with Del Autos on there as well. It's a 35 horsepower engine that, although it's a four stroke, actually revs a little bit more like a two stroke and that's what gives it some of its unique features really. <laughs> It will redline at sort of 9,000 revs and the power really kicks in above 5,500 so it likes to be worked hard. It comes with a six speed box, twin exhaust and really for me is probably the last of the real cafe racer style bikes. If you think the first one was the Gold Star, this was probably the last with the big drum brakes, the hump seat and the clip on bars. Another interesting feature about the Marini engine is that the gear change was on the right hand side and remained on the right hand side uh, through the 70s so it makes it familiar for guys that ride classic Brit bikes this is where you want it to be. See all the Japanese bikes by then had gone left hand change so it makes it easy for me with lots of other old Brit bikes to, uh, to get on this and, and go out and ride it. So these were very high quality bikes and very well engineered and the most distinctive and, and aesthetically pleasing feature about this bike in some ways is this enormous drum brake. So this is a Grimica brake. It's actually way too large for a bike of this weight. The bike only weighs about 140 kilograms wet so it is a bit overkill but it looks the business. And they only made this bike with a Grimica brake on the front for about 18 months. So these are the ones that the collectors really want to get hold of if they can. Uh, also got the Barani alloy wheels and just really sets it off. This brake in fact was more suited to the larger bikes where it was used such as the Ducati 750s and the large Benelli's but it does look the business on this. Another aesthetic feature about this bike that I really like, the best angle for me is when you see it from the rear. Having two exhaust pipes and silencers out the back really gives it that racing stance and makes it sound really impressive. Unlike other V-twins such as the Vincents for example where they went a two into one 
they kept with the twin pipes. So being the three and a half sport, this has got the clip-on handlebars, which give it a really aggressive racing stance when you're on the bike. Now, that's great, a bit like a BSA Gold Star. You do sacrifice the comfort though. The seat is pretty well padded and you can get a decent position on it, but after half an hour, 40 minutes, you know you've been on the bike. But the benefit is that it makes it very flickable uh, and the handling is excellent through the corners in the bend. So you get the enjoyment from that. One criticism though, I would say, is that it could do with a set of rear sets on it. The foot pegs are too far forward and these are the same pegs that they used and foot rests on the Strada over there. What it means is you're a bit like a jockey when you're riding this bike. It'd be better if these were set further back. But that's an improvement you can make and there are kits available, but I've kept this one original. Okay, so up at the cockpit, if you like, uh, it's dead basic on these. So even in 1975, this one is, or 74, it's, it's a pretty basic layout. Um, you've got your rev counter, which is an electronic rev counter which is fine when it works, but it's uh, not quite as reliable as some of the mechanical ones, should we say. Uh, you've got your speedometer there, which this is an Italian bike, so it's all in kilometers. And then basically just ignition on off uh, lights with uh, high beam, low beam, and that's about it. No indicators on this bike, didn't come with them as standard. You just wave your arm out accordingly and let people know. Another feature to point out, the difference between the Sport model and the Strada was that the Sport also included this steering damper, um, try and stop any tank slap as you're rattling along. Um, not really required on a bike like this to be honest, but all the proper sports and race bikes of the day did have them, so it, it helps give that sporty package appeal as it were. Another quirky feature about these marinas, which I've never seen on a bike before or since, was the, the fuel tap. So you see on this side we've got a standard manual fuel tap, but they're all fitted as well. The main fuel tap is electronic, so when you turn the ignition on, there's a little solenoid there which opens the fuel tap and feeds the car. Again, a unique feature to Marini's and, uh, and one that adds to its character. There aren't many motor Marini's around today um, and there's two reasons for that. Firstly, they were a very small company. They weren't built on a large production line and they were just sort of bench built, if you like. And I think the capacity hit up to 20 bikes per day in their peak in the 70s. And another reason, or the main reason probably, was the fact that compared to other bikes of the period, these were very expensive. As with all Italian bikes, they were pretty expensive, but the 350 Marini here was even more expensive than a 750 Triumph Bonneville or Norton Commando. So you were getting quite a small capacity machine for, and having to pay more for it, which again, restricted sales and appetite for them outside of Italy. These motor Marinis were genuine all Italian machines in terms of they were built in Bologna, but all the other ancillary components as well were sourced from their home market. So the Italian clocks, the Grimica brake, Barani rims, the Masocci front forks and rear shocks as well. So a real all Italian machine. And one of the best features about these bikes are their, their handling. Um, the relatively short wheelbase, which helps, very compact machine, lightweight, but the frame design as well is pretty interesting. So it's a twin duplex cradle frame. So there's two down tubes that wrap all the way under the engine, a bit like a feather bed Norton. Single tube at the top and swinging arm at the rear. But it's the way it's set up and the geometry of the bike really does make it very flickable on A and B roads and really good fun to ride. When you're out riding this bike, it's, it's a very engaging ride. The power comes in well above 5,000 revs. So with the six speed gearbox, which is pretty close ratio, you're changing gear far more often than you would with a, a British uh, single, for example. This means you're more involved with the bike and you feel like you're, you're part of the machine. It also sounds really good when you get up the rev range. This bike is actually the most modern machine in our collection. I like that for its ease of maintenance and its reliability. One feature as well is that it's a wet sump, so all the oil is kept in the sump rather than having the separate oil tank. These are really oil tight engines as well, which is great. To get under the seat, you simply undo the knobs each side, lift her up, off she comes. And there we have your access to your battery, 
get the tank off there when doing the straps. And in this one actually has an original toolkit, which is quite nice. Seen some action over the years by the looks of it, but uh, you've got your basic spanners and bits and bobs to uh, if you need an emergency repair when you're out on the road. There we go. Starting procedure on these, fairly straightforward. Each carburetor has got its own choke. Pop that up there. Pop that one up. Turn the ignition key. Little click there means that electronic fuel tap's opened. Kickstart, left hand side for Italian bikes. Don't ask me why, it's just what they did. But we'll give her a kick and see how we get on. So we haven't had this bike that long actually, but one of the first things I did was to join the local Marini club and they've been really helpful in trying to understand exactly how these bikes work, um, where to source parts from and also going out to various club meets and, and going out and hanging out with other guys that have got these bikes. It's, they are rare machines and it's good to see a group of them gathered together and to see other enthusiasts enjoy these as well. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notifications bell and give the video a like. We value every one of our subscribers and your support really does help us make more videos. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see more of our videos that we think you'll like. Thank you for supporting the Classic Motorcycle Channel.